Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do a little carpentry work with your scooter. Uh, essentially make a garage tool that will chalk the front tire for your scooter, for instance, when you wanna do an oil change. If you know about modern Vespas, you need to have the center stand up to change the oil. Uh, that's pretty hard to do, if you, unless you have somebody that's gonna balance the scooter or you're gonna lean it up against the wall. Um, I've showed how to use the scissor jack with the modern Vespas. Uh, you could use them together or you could just build a wooden stand like this um, to do basic service such as uh, servicing the oil, oil filter, belt, and so on. There's several instances where you do not want to have the scooter on the center stand when you're doing service to the engine on a modern Vespa. Um, Pretty basic construction. You just need a scrap of plywood that's approximately four feet wide. And you'll need a single a two by four that's either stud length or eight foot. Uh, you just cut it up into the pieces that you'll see shortly when I start building this for you. And a pair of eyelets. And I highly recommend having a canyon dancer. Find this on our web store, scooterwest.com. It's a very, very popular product. I've showed how to use this when you're tying down a scooter. A Vespa in particular in the back of a pickup truck or even on a hauler that would go in the back of an SUV receiver hitch. Uh, one other purpose for a chalk like this would be if you're going to put the scooter in the back of a pickup truck. You can put this whole con, you know, thing in the back of the truck. It will keep the fender from rubbing on the, the bed of the truck, a common problem when you put a Vespa in the back of a truck and it keeps the tire kind of from moving around. So you put this in there, you obviously tie down the scooter to the truck bed, but that would be another use for something as simple as this little wood contraption here. So let's get started right here. Just need pretty much a single eight foot two by four. Uh, I'm just doing it with scrap wood. I got some scrap two by fours and what is this? A uh, two by eight, so it's a little taller. It will work as well, but a two by four would um, just a single two by four, that's eight foot, would be enough material to build the whole project here. Uh, the other thing you're gonna need is a piece of plywood of some sort, you know, something that's approximately about four feet wide. You know, this is about four feet and maybe a foot and a half, two feet deep is ideal. Um, of course, it could just be some type of scrap, something that's a little sturdy. Uh, this looks to be some shelf from some old shelving unit that I just have kicking around the shop. Uh, first thing we're going to do is find the center line of this piece of plywood. Um, and of course, it could just be approximate. So we're a little bit more than 45. So it looks like 22 and 3 quarter will be our center line. Um, ideally, for the chalks, if you're just going to do vintage scooters, you can probably put them about 5 inches, 4 inches, have the gap. Um, pretty minimal, but if you're going to put the rear of a GTS Vespa that has a 130-70-12 tire, you're going to need minimum six inches of uh, width right here. So from your center line, we're going to go probably three and an eighth on each, each direction. So, you know, again, can just be a proximate, something like that, uh, pretty handy to have some type of speed square or a drywall square. Uh, not necessary, but helps make a nice straight line. So go ahead and mark these two here. And we're gonna set the two by fours just like this once we get this backer right here. And I'll put a little X here and here because we're gonna, just so I know where to put the, the screws. So. Uh, first thing we're going to do is put this right across like such. And again, I'm just going to eyeball the measurement, not too critical, you know, something like that. Flip it over. Let's shoot a couple screws into it. And just what I do is maybe another pair of screws here and a total of five should be good.
And that should hold the piece just fine, just like that. I'll show you one other thing I did. I put two little X's here and here because that's where those uh, two by fours. Um, from the back side, we're going to use a straight edge once again and mark those center lines. The reason being is we're going to shoot the screws from the back side. So something like that. So have those two pieces of old blocking here, two by four, set those right on the lines. You know, we have our six, approximately a six and a, um, six and a quarter is what I have. And I got some a little bit longer screws here, just make a little strengthen it up. Kind of look down, I have the X on this side. And we'll take our driver here. Again, you can do all this with just nails, work just as well. So I'm gonna send a pretty longer, like three inch screw. And we'll do the same with this piece here. And we'll go flip it back over. And those lines that are already set up right here. Um, we know the wood stops uh, about, about right here, so. You see these are, you know, they look like drywall screws or construction screws. Uh, kind of a flat head, so a regular machine screw, the head would uh, be kind of sticking out, wouldn't be the most ideal for this, but uh, there we have it. Uh, that one got a little bit off, but that's fine. Not, not all that critical, just enough to keep the tire from flipping around. And now we're gonna do the last uh, thing. We're gonna put a pair of eyelets. So get hooks or eyelets, something like this from your hardware store. And you want to get something that's pretty big. These are um, where the number zeros or five sixteenths. And we'll put those on each of the corners. Uh, Pre-drill the holes. Whatever this is, a little bigger than a quarter inch. Quarter inch will probably work just as well. And we can get the eyelet in there. You can put a screwdriver in there. Make sure you get it all the way threaded in, because the last thing you don't want is the eyelet to pull right out when you have the tie down all set up. And so there you have it. Probably about 15, 20 minutes of work and you have yourself a handy stand. Uh, works perfect for your smaller garage when you're not going to make the investment to have a full motorcycle lift, which if you're not using a full-size motorcycle lift all that much, it's probably not worth having around. They take up a lot of space. They're kind of in the way. My own personal garage, I haven't had one um, ever since I started the Vespa Motorsport Service Department. I've had, had them in my service department here, but... Back in the early days, I had one in my garage. So let's test it out, see how it works. Uh, a couple things you wanna have. Of course, a pair of tie downs, pretty critical, and it's very helpful to have a Canyon Dancer, especially with scooters, unless you have a scooter like a Vespa GTV or you know, Zuma 125, something that has like tubular handlebars you could tie off. Don't really wanna tie off on the grips, uh, so this is ideal for something like a Vespa. So ideally, there's two ways to use this. I mean, you could back the scooter in, uh, not put it on the stand, back it in there, and then use your tie downs, you know, tie it right in place. Uh, even you can see right now, it's just standing up on its own. The tire's wide enough to be in the chocks, but I'd probably tie it off off the rear rack. 
but let's get it set up for servicing the engine. So I have my Canyon Dancer ready to go, and we're gonna take the scooter right off the center stand, wheel it right up onto the chalk. Obviously, hit the brakes, it kind of slides the chalk around a little bit. Another suggestion, you could put some rubber or you know, feet on the underside of your front wheel chalk. Have your tie downs already, you know, hooked onto those eyelets so you're not bouncing the scooter. Could temporarily put it back up on the center stand. Have your tie down ready. I just would prefer the standard style tie downs, not a ratchet style. They just work a lot easier than cranking a ratchet. And technically you don't need to tie it down all that tight. So at this point, scooter is nice and stable. Uh, we're able to jack the rear up. We have the center stand up, so we're able to easily do an oil change on a Vespa. So this is the perfect setup if you're gonna do major work like removing the engine or even simple service such as uh, servicing the tire or changing the oil. So ideally you'd have a scissor jack uh, available on the Scooter West web store and it's tool jack. And you can slide that right underneath the frame right here, have your socket, and we're able to lift the scooter. So with the stand, you obviously have the stability side to side without it being on the, the center stand. Uh, one thing, if you're gonna jack it from the center point of the scooter, for instance, say you're gonna change the engine out, pull the engine out, or remove the shocks, I would highly recommend putting a pair of weights. It could be either be a couple you know, cinder blocks and you could put them on both the left and right side of this wooden plate. Um, alternatively, if you have weights from a weightlifting set, that would work as well. Uh, you can bolt it to the floor. You could you know, use the balance of the scooter. You could use your jack and just jack it from the rearmost point of the motor to kind of balance out the weight. So at this point, I could jack the motor up, and this is the perfect example of an application where you drain the oil. The scooter's tipped a little bit to the right. Uh, the center stands up because it's very difficult to change the oil on these modern Vespas with the center stand down since the oil just drains on to the center stand. Um, but you could service it pretty easily, remove the rear tire. You know, at this point, you could pull the center stand down, remove the rear tire and service it. Uh, but you know, there's many different applications of how you could use, use this. This is a, you pretty much do everything I would do on the lift. Uh, another application for this setup is you could put this whole entire setup on a table. For instance, build a chalk like this on top of an old wooden workbench or just bolt this to the workbench. Uh, you use a motorcycle ramp and probably want to have two people, but you could put a scooter up on a workbench and you're able to work on it right at eye level, much like you would with a proper motorcycle style lift that I have in a professional shop. So thanks for watching the how-to video on building a home-built carpentry style wheel chalk for your Vespa and its service needs. Look out for the next video. I'm gonna show how to use the conjunction of the scissor jack from Vespa Motorsport along with the wheel chalk for a vintage Vespa such as this setup. It works ideal for both the modern Vespa and the vintage Vespa. Uh, one last little thing, uh, June 27th, if you've been following the channel, uh, Parade Day. Hopefully you're uh, partaking in a Parade Day event in your own town. Uh, maybe you're organizing one, whether it's just three people or you have a club with hundreds of people. I hope you got something lined up. But the Parade Day here in San Diego, I'm organizing a Parade Day at Vespa Motorsport. And I built this handy uh, chalk. Don't really need it for a service department. Don't need it for my workshop. So pretty much I'll just give it away to somebody that shows up. So pretty much the first person that comes to me on June 27th and asks for that, I'll just give it to you. I'll store it for a minute because you're probably gonna be riding a scooter if you're showing up to parade day here in San Diego. So check that out, June 27th, 2021. If you're watching this in the future, sorry, at least you know how to make one. It's not gonna cost you much. 
Until next time, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com.